I was born with a congenital birth defect fibular hemimilia. The doctor said I would never walk. You're always singled out, you, you get picked on, picked last, laughed at. I would be running around and playing sports, my leg would fall off and I had to find the willpower and determination to, to get back up and put my leg on even though I was embarrassed. I'm disabled, but as of right now, I'm the fifth, sixth fastest man in the world. I just hate what comes with that word, disabled. Because you are disabled, you're only able to do A, B, C, and D. The reality of it is, I can do anything that I set my mind to. That's my message. That's what gives me motivation when I'm out here on the track, training and running. If you're getting laughed at, picked on, or being told no, I hope they can see my story and say, wow, Blake is competing against the fastest runners in the world. Imagine what I can do. Drake Stadium at the University of California in Los Angeles has been home to many of America's greatest athletes including legendary track and field stars Jackie Joyner-Kersey and Allison Felix. Blake Leeper is an athlete with similar aspirations. Fighting stigma, injustice and disability, Blake is proof that individuals with serious disabilities can not only compete, but can do so at the very highest level. with you know, the support from my family members and my, my older brother, my grandfather, my grandmother, everybody's you know, rallying around me to kind of make sure I live a, a normal, healthy life. Um, I started just playing basketball and baseball as a kid. Uh, I went to high school, went to college, and by the time I got to college, that's when actually I seen Pistorius run for the first time on TV, and I was like, wow, there's, there's something out there for me. Like Pistorius before him, Blake runs on specially designed prosthetic blades allowing him to compete on the Paralympic stage. I got my first pair of blades and started, you know, playing with them and started training a little bit and I, and I, I kept getting better and I kept getting better and I qualified for my first national championships. And then by 2011, I actually uh, tied uh, Pistorius' world record in 100 meters with a 1091. By doing that, that kind of would, like solidified saying, wow, I actually have a shot. Leeper has continued to excel on the track in 2018, he ran the fastest ever 400 meters by a double amputee. And at this year's US Track and Field Championships, he finished fifth in the final of the men's 400 meters, racing against able-bodied athletes. Blake is currently coached by former sprinter and NFL legend Willie Galt, who enjoyed a successful career as a wide receiver with the Chicago Bears and the Los Angeles Raiders during the 80s and 90s. Now an athletics coach, Willie is helping Blake try and achieve his dream of competing against able-bodied athletes at the Olympic Games. It's always been his goal to compete against regular people uh, because he is regular. When I first, we first started working together three years ago, I didn't see him as a disabled person. And I saw him as a person who willing to work hard, dedicate his time and his energy to something and try to achieve a goal. And he's worked really hard those, these past three years to try to accomplish that. I mean, the fact that he is running against able bodies and he has a, a, this disability, uh, votes well for the disability community that, to know that they can do anything they want. Blake is now fighting the sport's governing body, the IAAF, to allow him to race against able-bodied athletes. If he succeeds, he could be competing for the US track and field team at the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. Oscar Pistorius was the first one who started this and he was, he was able to run in the 2012 Olympics and Hopefully Blake will have the same success, hopefully, and be able to have the opportunity. There's only been one case, that's Oscar, and they, he was allowed to run, so Blake should be allowed to run. Another key member of Blake's team is his trainer and manager, Johan Stephenson. 
Johan oversees Blake's physical conditioning, preparing him for the rigors of racing against some of the world's best athletes. He is just one of the fastest and most hardworking men in, in the world now. He has, like people are talking about, you know, it's the Blake, but it's not. It's just brutally hard work. And he, he's working probably harder than anybody out there. Blake follows a unique training plan to accommodate his needs as a double amputee. We have to change up a few things because he doesn't have calves, he doesn't have ankle joints. So there's a lot of things that we have to change there. We, we just tried a lot of things and we are on a pretty good routine now. It's challenging, but it works. We had a lot of, a lot of bumps in the roads on the way but he kept on coming, kept on coming. And, you know, that, that's, that's what makes champions. Those bumps in the road are the other side of Blake Leaper's story. Even when he was winning medals and enjoying success on the track, Blake was also battling a decade-long addiction to alcohol and drugs. Deep down, I was I was searching. Um, you know, I was trying to figure out what you know the meaning of life. Who you know who I am as a person. Trying to wear this cape of, of being the face of the dis, you know disability, or you know trying to trying to inspire a generation. I was in a deep dark place, hanging out with the wrong people. You know, I mean, doing a lot of partying. You know, and unfortunately indul indulging in you know in drugs and, and drinking a lot, and, and to the point where I just spiraled out of control. Um, and, and then I ended up, you know, trying to pull it back together, but I couldn't. It was so tough to get myself out of that position until I hit my rock bottom. Um, and, and, my, and my rock bottom is when I tested positive in the 2015 National Champ Paralympic National Championships for cocaine. That failed test threatened to overshadow all Blake's earlier successes at the Paralympic Games and left him at rock bottom. Honestly, that was the lowest point in my life. I lost sponsorships, I lost support. Uh, I was dropped by my leg sponsors, so literally I lost my legs. I made a huge mistake, but the most important thing I learned is what are you going to do after that mistake? Life is not about how hard you can hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward about how hard you can take hits and keep pushing forward. In those days where I was suspended and you know I didn't have that much money in my bank account because I lost sponsorships and, and people you know lost their belief in me and, and people was talking bad about me, I still had to wake up and, and, and suit up and put my legs on and show up at the track and train like I was a champion. Um, and, and I was determined to, 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 to make right, to make amends and, and, and to get my life back on track. With his addiction troubles behind him, Blake Leeper is determined to be a role model for people struggling through adversity. He's also hoping to inspire a generation of disabled athletes by becoming one of the fastest men in the world. The takeaway, you know, when, I'm, when it's all said and done and, and I'm gone, and, and, and my name gets popped up in the conversation. I just want people to look at my story and look at my life and say, wow, he was a fighter. Like, wow, that kid fought. He gave it all that he had. And went through, the, through the ups and downs, you know, through the disability, through the addiction, through, through all of it, he never quit. And so by them identifying that is that, that mindset of never quitting regardless of the situation that, that you're in, that I fought through it all, that can maybe give them some a little inspiration and hope and saying, wow, if Blake fought, I can fight too. So whatever situation I'm going through, I'm going to push through it. That's what I want people to take away. That's what I want people to understand about my life.